morning. The existence or non-existence of God has, has always been a hot button topic. You know, people have always asked and they will always ask the question, does, does God truly exist? And, and there are those who would really want to wait for, they would want to really have an extraordinary experience you know, before they come to believe that, that, that God truly exists. You know, they would want to want, and they would want to really see an extraordinary manifestation you know, from God before they come to believe. And so they asked, the, I mean, they could ask the question, I mean, God, where are you, God? You know, sh show yourself. You know, God, you know, show yourself. Prove that you're God. Let us see you. Let us, let us, let us touch you. Let us experience you. I mean, we, we have to go back to the experience of Elijah. What happened to Elijah? That, that God, you know, was not even found in the earthquake. God was not found in the fire. Where did, where did Elijah find God? In the gentle wind, the, the still, silent wind. And this goes to prove the point that we, we need more than our senses to experience God, to truly experience God. We need more than human logic to truly, to truly experience God. Because if we would want to depend on the scientific method, if we want to depend on mere observation or experimentation, then we may not, we may not know who God is. We may be disappointed. Because God goes beyond our human senses. I mean, he goes beyond our human logic. God is mystery. He is a mystery, and we cannot subject the mystery of God to observa mere observations or experimentations. I mean, we, we need faith. And, and that is why we're here this morning. We are gathered in faith to celebrate the, the Eucharist. It is, it is faith that enables us to, to see God present in the bread and God present in the wine. And it is faith that enables us to see God present in the poor, in the rejected, in the abandoned. It is, it is faith. And it is important, my dear friends, we realize how much we need how much we need faith to experience God. We need faith and we need wisdom. We go back to the first reading. God asked Solomon to make a request. And Solomon made the request to have an understanding heart, to have wisdom. Because it is important we pray for wisdom. It is important we pray for an understanding heart because Based on the gospel of today, we, ha we now have an idea of how God comes to us. That this God is hidden. God is hidden. Like the treasure in the field, buried in a field. I mean, God, God is hidden. And because, and because God is hidden, we need wisdom to be able to find God. God is like a treasure hidden in the field. And that is why we have to realize the importance for us to, to pray like Solomon. God give us, give me an understanding heart. And this has been the ways of God. I mean, look at what happened to, how did Christ come to us? The word of God, the divine Lagos, became flesh. So the divine Lagos was hidden in the human flesh. And this human flesh dwelt amongst us. This human flesh was even hidden from the clever and the intelligence. I thank you, Father, God of heaven and earth, for hiding these things from the clever. 
So it, it, takes, it takes wisdom, my dear friends, for us to identify and to really discover God who is, who is hidden. This parable of the treasure hidden in the field means that you know, God is hidden in our human experiences. So my human experience could be the field where the treasure has been buried. God is hidden in the scriptures. So the word of God, the Bible, could be the field where this treasure is hidden. God is hidden in the sacraments, outward sign of inward grace. So the sacrament could be the field where this treasure is hidden. And so we need wisdom to, 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 to see God, to, to identify this God who who is hidden. And, and because God is hidden in my human experience, it means that there is no human experience that is just human. Every human experience is also divine. Because in my human experience, I am also experiencing God. I am also listening to God. I am also hearing from God, even in my human experience, be it pain, be the experience of pain, be the experience of loss, be the experience of injustice. What could be the message from God? I mean, what, what exactly could God be saying? Even when we go through pain and when we go through, you know, evil, evil in this society, even when we experience such evil, even when we experience injustice, what could God be saying? Because God is hidden. And there is always a message. And that is why in the presence of God, in the economy of the kingdom of God, there is no accident, there is no chance. No. There is a purpose for everything that happens to us. For those he foreknew, he predestined, and those he predestined, he justified. There is no accident in the presence of God. There is no, there is no chance. Nothing happens by chance. Because there is always a message. For the good, for the bad, for the ugly, God has a message because God is hidden. It is, it, is, it, is for us to, it is for us to discover and, and to listen and to, and to pray for this understanding heart. And that is why we come to realize that wisdom, wisdom is the treasure that we need. What is wisdom? Wisdom is to, is to see with the eyes of God. To see with the eyes of God. And that changes everything. When we see with the eyes of God, it changes everything because, you know, you, you may have all the monies in the world and you may have the power, you may have the wealth, you may have all the connections, you may have all the fame, you may have everything money can buy. But if you do not see life the way God sees life, if we do not see money the way God sees it, if you do not see wealth the way God sees it, everything you have will come haunting after you. And that's what happens. Everything you have, everything we have will come hunting after us. Do you know why when you know, St. Paul, when St. Paul discovered Christ, do you know why he said, I now count everything as lost. He said that. I count everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus. Because everything makes no sense if we do not see everything with the eyes of God. Everything makes no sense. It is all emptiness and futility if we do not see them with the eyes of God. And so, my dear friends, I mean, there are those, there are those whose lives have been cut short by what they have. There are those whose lives have been cut short by the money they have, I mean, by the wealth they have, by the friends they have. I mean, their lives have been compromised. Their lives have been cut short by what they own. And this is the beauty of wisdom. That we may see that God is the source of all things. God is the source of my existence. That is what wisdom reveals to us. When, when we see everything the way God would want us to see them, when we see with the eyes of God, then we see everything as coming from God and to be used you know, for the glory of God. And this is why wisdom is everything. 
that I may know how to manage what God has given to me. How in how to manage the wealth, how how to manage the friendship, how to how to manage the connections that God has given to me. It is wisdom that reveals to us how to you know order what God has given to us and to have the scale of preference, what should come first and what should follow. The reason why God is hidden, my dear friends, the, the reason why the treasure is hidden in the field is because it has to be intentional that we search for God. I mean, and that's why God is hidden. We, we have to search for him. We have, to, we have to make that decision to search for God, to search for the truth, to search for our faith. So it is a beautiful thing that so many of us were born Catholics. That is good. Thank God that I was born a Catholic, but it is not enough because that is the difference between the one who was born a Catholic and the one who, who is able to find his or her Catholic faith. So, so we have to move from just being you know, Catholics who were, were born by our parents and baptized in the church. We have to move beyond that. We truly have to discover our Catholic faith. We truly have to find our Catholic faith and that is when it makes sense to us. If you have not discovered your faith as a person, if you have not gone out of your way to search for your faith, you know, to ask questions, to really you know, discover your faith, the truth, God, yourself, nothing makes sense to you. Because at the end of the day, you might just see coming to church as, as a mere obligation. Or because others are going to church, or my parents want me to be in church, and then I'm in church. Why? Because, I mean, you were born Catholic. Beautiful thing. But that is not enough, especially in our time and age. We need to go beyond that to discover our faith, to find this treasure hidden in the field. That is when it makes sense. That is when it becomes a personal faith, and you are proud of it because you have found it yourself. God wants to go out of a way to search for him. And we value what we have when we search for it. We value the faith. When, we, when we're able to discover it, it becomes a treasure. You call it, this is, this is my treasure because I, I have been able to find it myself. And no one can tell me otherwise. At, at that point, no one can deceive you anymore. I mean, no, no one can tell you otherwise because you have found it yourself. You have discovered it yourself. That is where we ought to be today. But what did this man do? When the man found this treasure, what did he do? Recall that you know, he hid the treasure and went with joy, sold everything he had, came back to buy the field. So he found the treasure and did what? And hid the treasure and went and sold everything he had to come back to buy that field. He hid the treasure because he wouldn't want to lose it. So having found it, he wouldn't want to lose it. So he had to hide it. And that, that is important because if we have truly experienced God, we wouldn't want to lose him. And that's a message. Anyone who has truly experienced God would not want to lose him. If you have truly experienced the joy of your heart and the peace of your soul, you wouldn't want to lose God. You, know, you, want, you would want to keep him to yourself, even against all odds. And he went out with joy, the joy of the gospel, the joy of having found Jesus Christ. He went out with joy. And what did he do? He sold everything, sold everything, and came back to purchase this field. Because nothing compares to God. Not money, nothing. Nothing compares to God. Not money, not, not wealth, nothing. Nothing compares to God. That, that is a message. Sell everything. I mean, when he called the disciples, they left everything and followed him because nothing compares to God. There is no treasure. There is no earthly treasure that is more than the treasure of God. Nothing compares to God. So what is the message, my dear friends? That if, if, if money will stand on my way in my relationship with God, if money would want to deprive me of this joy, I am ready to sacrifice money for me to possess this eternal joy. If, if even friends would want to deprive me of, of, of this joy, that I am ready to sacrifice even my friends for me to find this eternal joy. If, you know, if, my, if, if, if alcohol would want to deprive me of this eternal joy, I'm ready to sacrifice it because nothing compares to the love that we find in Christ Jesus. He is the ultimate. And what do I call this? I call this spiritual spiritual 
you know, we have to really come to that point where we, we are able to, you know, decongest, downsize, you know, spiritual downsizing. We all need that. Spiritual downsizing. And it is so important because, you know, it, it, it is one thing for us to find God and another thing for us to create the space for God to dwell in us. So why do we need spiritual downsizing, emotional downsizing, psychological downsizing? Because having found God, let us give God a space in our hearts, in our lives. May God dwell in us. May he occupy that rightful place that belongs to him. And that is where, my dear friends, we shall be proud that we have the treasure hidden in us.